Hello dudes. The end of turn four. Uh, here's the chip pulls for the Dark Valley. And let's have a quick look at the game because I think uh, we're at a stopping point. The, the Germans are not going to be able to win uh, the scenario even though there are two full additional turns left. Uh, at least I think so anyway. Let's just talk it out and we'll see. I'm, I'm, I'm not 100% certain, we'll, we'll see. So Stalingrad is here. We've taken Stalingrad and that's uh, it's worth a victory point or whatever the case may be. <coughs> and it impacts replacements for the next turn for the, for the Soviets. Uh, I will just a quick note and say that I, I don't think I've done a good job of using replacements uh, and, and uh, rebuilding, uh, taking units and rebuilding them into guards units. I think I perhaps could have done a better job of that and brought some more powerful units to the board for the Soviets. That said, they didn't really need them, just the way I played it anyway. Uh, as you can see here at the end of the turn, whoa, I got you just in time. Did you guys try and grab that as it fell? <laughs> uh, here we go. So isolated units, so these guys, uh, these guys, these guys will pop off. They will go off at the end of the logistics phase, so the map will end up looking like this. And these will become our supply guys. I finally, oh, and they're gonna die because this dude is in supply. I moved him with the fourth uh, Panzer HQ. And all of these guys will bite the bullet except for that dude because they are all adjacent to units in supply. And they are isolated. At least that's how I understand the rule work. After several go rounds, I'm looking at 15 different parts of the frickin' rule book. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Now that does give us another victory point there, which might make things interesting. All right, because we'll probably pick this up, obviously. Okay, so that's this sort of supply situation. I don't have any. <clears throat> Any uh, any other units that we need to adjust? I do need to go ahead and move some, uh, all the little bits we need to do, all the administrative stuff for the end of the turn. I haven't done that. As you can see, that that clears up a big whack and hole. And if you look to your right uh, over here, there's Moscow. Where's Moscow? Here. Um, you know, it does make a big hole here. But there's nothing here. There's one victory point uh, hex, and there's another here somewhere here that I'm trying to get gawky, right? But, though I, you know, we're not going to potentially make that this turn. It'll be too easy to be reinforced there. Down in the Caucasus, I was really trying to push hard here, but I, I'm just out of steam and out of, uh, out of supply and not going to be really able to push these guys, given it's going to be mud this turn, so everyone's going to lose two and movement points. We'll move this up, one, two, three, maybe four, five to here. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's the farthest we could have supply. And because I don't have an HQ, I can't throw it any further, so I can't get to this victory point location. Um, so we're kind of hosed. I can get it, but I've got to be. I won't, I'll be out of supply. There's another hex here. It's pretty well defended, and now in hindsight, as I look at it. Probably should have gone for these two, right? That would have been the smart thing to do. Dork. All right. So bad play by the Germans. What can I tell you? So there was a chance there the Germans could have potentially captured that uh, that section. That'd be two VPs. So let's make a little note of that. That's two VPs we would have picked up if we did it the right way. And then there was Stalingrad, which I think will hold. And then this little town here, Vorenz. That's uh, that's one. That'd be two extra. And I don't think we picked up... Did we pick up any others? And I'm seeing if it's possible. Well, here we go. Yeah, we picked up... Um, what town is that? That doesn't have a name. Huh. It's just a port. Okay, so we'll just put a note there. One port. All right. Put a little anchor symbol. And we already had Stellino. Grab that guy. I don't think there's anything in here. Nope. And, and, and there's nothing over here that we picked up. I thought 
tool that was here somewhere. That's further. It's closer this way. No. Okay. You know, I didn't. I didn't make the push. Ah, there's tool there, and that's a VP hex. See, I probably should have made a push for that one hex there. Probably still could. I got enough forces here. I could make a, a bum rush for it. One, two. I could probably crack that guy, <clears throat> but that's doubtful. We start with 31 VPs, we need 37 to win. So 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36 if we got, uh, if we hadn't got those two. And I would have had to pick up Tula to make up the 37. So, you know, with fair to poor Soviet defensive play, we really didn't get particularly close, but we didn't play. But if I think if I had played the Germans better, and I know I didn't maximize the usage of my HQs uh, properly, uh, we I think you could uh, have a much more interesting game. This game was certainly interesting. I enjoyed the the uh, to and fro and the backwards and forwards play. The the some of the the way the chits that that came out, the lineup of the chits that came out was really. Uh, pretty hilariously pro-German, and even with that, and despite my play, um, I think some pretty subpar play for the Soviets, the Germans really still couldn't uh, maximize the, the opportunity. So, uh, you may have noted, I took, uh, I just decided to take this map out of here, and I, I ignored the Leningrad section of the map, because there really wasn't a whole lot going on over there anyway, and it just made my life a little simpler. Uh, so that that's a wrap on it. I have had uh, you know uh, my feelings on this game go uh, backwards and forwards. I gotta say that if I had to sit down with someone who had played a few war games and they wanted to play a, their first East Front game, you know I'd probably pick this as a title, uh, not because it's more representative of history, just because it's, it's kind of a fun game. Uh, you got two big armies banging at each other with random chip pull. Some once you get down, uh, I think if there was a rule summary done by someone that uh, could get it all in its logical order and have all the rules for each particular instance in one spot together, uh, I think it would be a very easy and playable game. And I think it, it is it deserving of, uh, you know, potential title of future classic of uh, the Eastern Front campaign games? No. Uh, but is it uh, worthy of the title of uh, something that is very playable? Excuse me. Pardon me. A uh, very playable game that is uh, interesting and provides uh, challenging puzzles and problems, both from a logistic and logistical and tactical standpoint, and some strategic level decision making in terms of you know, where am I going to focus my effort? How am I going to focus my effort? What headquarters am I going to use? Yeah, I mean, it does do that. And it, I, 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 you know, I have would have to say, I, as this, like I said, this is not a review. These are my off-the-cuff opinions having um, you know, literally just finished this fourth turn, right? Two, uh, eight minutes and 32 seconds ago. So um, I think it's a good game and it's enjoyable. It just needs uh, it need the rules need to be settled. The and a summer and I, I need a summary so that I don't end up flicking through the rule book a lot. And that may just be the way I play because I play two or three different games at a time. And I'm playing solo, so I don't have someone to bounce off. Oh, hey, does logistics work this way? Am I doing this right? I've always got to look it up, and I find myself constantly in the rule book doing little checks, little checkups. Uh, you know, that's what you get for playing one turn every other day or so. All right, I'm gonna pack this bad boy up, sort it all out. It's gonna go on the shelf, it's a keeper, and uh, maybe I'll be able to get my lads to play this with me one at some point. All right, cheerio.